My name is Brett, I'm with Russell. We're here at DevNet, and Russell, we're happy to have you join us. Just wanted to ask you a few questions about your product and, and your uh, company. So, one big use case that seems to be important to network engineers is about audio, uh, video streaming and audio streaming, and it's uh, quality as well as the impact on the network. And just wanted to find out about how your product addresses that use case. Okay, thanks, nice to be here. Um, so, we're traditionally a UC monitoring company. Uh, we've had a product in the field for about seven years now, monitoring um, UC applications, primarily the big three, Cisco, Microsoft, Avaya. Um, but really looking at it just from the health performance, uh, you know, troubleshooting all that. Um, we've recently started working with Cisco, along with APIC EM, um, to take the information we have, you know, the knowledge we have about the, the UC environment, um, and make APIC aware of what's going on out there, and then leveraging the easy QoS feature. Um, to be able to offer treatment of these different UC systems. You know, Cisco being a, a if you're in a clean ecosystem, all Cisco all, everywhere, um, they can do that with Jab or they can do it with, you know, via the integration with CUCM. But as soon as you add third party uh, UC applications, you, know, you start to get a, a more complex environment and if, if the, you can't make decisions, you know, without knowing the full picture. So we bring that part, uh, you know, into the picture um, and let, let work with APIC to, to get QS across that. Alright, great. Uh, a couple more questions regarding that. So you mentioned APKM, you talked about easy QoS. Can you maybe go a little bit deeper and just talk about how you guys actually leverage that technology with APKM? Uh, just a little bit more specific for any developers out there that may want to know a little bit more detail about how that was done. Okay, sure. Um, so like I mentioned, we have the UC um, information, right? We talked to CUCM, we use the Axle API there, RISPORT, a bunch of different APIs that with on that system. Um, same thing with Skype for Business, there's an API to get uh, real-time information about what's going on in the network, uh, registered users, calls going on. Um, same with Avaya, you can leverage that uh, information from that system, get real-time feed. So taking all this and then turning around and giving it into APIC via the API. So they have a northbound API, it's RESTful, uh, very simple to use. Um, you, you know, you log, you get a token to let you talk to it, um, and then you can pull almost any kind of configuration information you want, so we can see what's already configured for uh, the quality of service, be sure all the features we need are turned on, um, and then start giving information about the users that we, we know about that we want to start adding um, flows information for. Um, the API itself supports both the static QoS, so you can set static policies that are defined on the switches and give information, you know, give treatment for everything on that port. And then, as we get a little fancier in the use cases, we can start doing dynamic flows and start setting up per, um, like per five tuple um, information. So you can get a single flow that maybe doesn't con conform to your regular QS policy and give special treatment for that, like calling into a room system. So all of that's via the Northbound API into the easy QoS system. And then, of course, all the error checking coming back, all the you know sta keeping status, all that's also through the API. Great, yeah. great. So what I heard is a lot of technology there. So tell me about how you got started learning the technology, specific to APIC EM, EasyQuas, and what you leveraged uh, maybe with uh, DevNet and such so that you can begin to use those technologies. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting because Nectar's had an idea for a long time about wanting to do something like this, right? We have information, we give all the monitoring, we let people de debug and then troubleshoot things. And we often know what, what to do next. Right, but all we can do is tell you, hey, go look at this. Here, here's what your problem is. And we, we really like the idea of taking that information, sending it over to, to the network, and actually start making changes. The problem is, nobody's going to let a, you know, a, a company that's not Cisco start making significant changes in the network, which is why it's very neat that APIC came out, leverages this, you know, gives us an incredible power, power within the system, but in a safe, controlled manner, you know, um, controlled through, through, through APIC. So when this came out, we got very excited about it. Um, to find out about it, we went into the DevNet. Um, you know, the, the website there is very full featured. It has the online API, um, completely specs that out. Um, most important for us was the sandbox. Um, two reasons. Uh, we did a lot of initial, uh, even initial development on the sandbox. We did some work to verify that the features we needed are there um, before we invested any, any too much time or money into our own lab. And then when we started building our own lab, we didn't have enough I think like lots of companies, our VM infrastructure was overweighted. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff running on it. So we had to add some more memory, we had to upgrade the lab. It took, you know, procurement, all that stuff, took a while. We were able to do the first couple of months of development on the product completely through the um, Sandbox lab, and that was invaluable. Awesome. Now, 
So you made great use of the sandbox, and that's great because that's exactly what DevNet intends, and that's what we wanted to provide. How about the learning labs? Was there anything that you found useful there in terms of APEC and, and what you're doing to get started to learn the products? Okay, a couple of things. Yeah, the developers, you know, product management developers spent time on the, in the learning labs figuring out how the EasyQoS feature works. And then we've also leveraged it for our operation side, right? Because in order to roll this thing out, we have to have our ops, our um, solutions architects, understand APIC, understand the features, understand how it's rolled out to the, to the world, uh, so we can help our customers and partners start to roll this, you know, roll this out. Okay. But more important than that is also understanding the overall APIC EM uh, you know, architecture and where the value is. And so even features we're not leveraging, like the um, IWAN. It's important that our op people understand it, can talk about it, can, can when a customer brings it up, we're, we're intelligent enough, um, so that the end customers understand the entire value prop. Because the APIC has to get adopted before our product can do anything. Um, so the learning labs have been very helpful there. Great. Final question for you, so what would you recommend if there was another company that wanted to learn Cisco technologies? What would they do on the DevNet side in terms of the steps that you would suggest that they do to get started? Okay, um, as you mentioned, um, the learning labs are very, very good. Um, the, Dev, the DevNet website's phenomenal. Um, the section on APIC itself has all the, the APIs completely online, so when you get to the point where you're starting to do some development work, it, it's all self-documented, as most of Cisco stuff is. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, the website's a very good place to start. Great. I want to thank you very much for your time, and just a reminder that when you come to DevNet, the learning labs we're talking about, the sandboxes, all these different things, along with our technical support that we provide here, it's all free. It's a great way to get started. Thanks for watching.